going on guys? Welcome to a brand new and exciting video today. So now this video is gonna be different than most of my travel, interactive, fun vlogs uh, on the channel. It's gonna be about the 15 tips that you need to know for your first experience, for the best experience at Disney World out in Orlando. Now some of these tips I'm just gonna run down through. Uh, we are at the tail end of our incredible third birthday celebration with Ali out here in Disney World Orlando um, and had an amazing time, but some of these tips we wish we would have known well in advance and hopefully position you guys for the best way to have the ultimate and the best trip with your family. Number one tip, download the Disney World app on your phone. Now if you guys download the app and connect it to the tickets on the day that you're entering the park, whatever park you're going to, it's gonna make life so much easier. You can actually check on all the rides, majority of the rides, let's say, in the park, see the wait time in each line. You can also book restaurants, uh, you can book food, um, you can plan out or have it plan out in a full a day itinerary for you guys in the app. Uh, and there's just so much you can do in this app. So 100% download the Walt Disney World app before you head out there. Number two, check out the different pricing and promotions that are running at each park or at all the parks, let's say. You can actually get a pretty good price purchasing the four park pass tickets if you plan on going to four different parks for four different days. Uh, for example, for us, we ended up booking two different parks for Media and I specifically. If we would have booked the four person pass for all four family members, we would have had to only pay $20 more than purchasing two days individually for four persons. And this is in June 2023. So check out all the promotions and discounts before you buy your tickets. Number three on the list, bring water and stay well hydrated. So stay hydrated before you guys go to the park, obviously. Um, bring also a thermal flask, which Rachel is recommending. Fill it up with ice and bring it with you. Whenever you go to a different restaurant, wherever you eat at, they'll actually put ice cubes in it, put some water in it, and there's so many different water filtration systems you can find around the park. So 100% stay hydrated, bring a big flask, bring water, because you can actually bring that in the park. And yeah, you guys don't wanna be dehydrated on your fun-filled day with the family. Number four on the list, on top of the water, don't forget to bring sunscreen and wear it religiously. One of the tips that Rachel recommends is bringing travel size uh, mini sunscreen stick, like SPF 50 for the baby specifically. You can also put it on yourself as an adult. Uh, we all used it. So 100% bring sunscreen because it's probably gonna be much more expensive when you buy it in the park. Now number five on this list, make sure you wear a hat. Make sure you wear a cap or something. So you can see all of this protecting yourself in the sun. We want you guys to have the best day. So make sure you wear some type of a hat or a cap to protect your head, especially for the kids. Now the park, they don't sell baby or child size hats, so make sure you bring your own specifically It's if it's for a baby. Number six, bring a rain poncho or bring like a little travel size umbrella. Out here in Florida, especially the time of the year, you never know when it's gonna rain. It is tropical climate, and when it does rain, it does rain briefly and goes away and dries up really quickly. However, still bring a poncho and bring an umbrella of some sorts. Number seven tip, bring a compact portable fan. What Rachel's advising is bring a powerful one with at least 6,000 mAh, I think that's what she's saying. 4,000 mAh is helpful, but not as powerful. Uh, so if you guys are going there, especially when it's high season, it's really, really hot, bring a little portable fan. Number eight, a huge tip, get early access or early arrival passes, which Media and I had 30 minute early access to. We ended up hitting up three rides within the 30, 45 minutes uh, where no one was entering the parks. So 100% get early access passes if you guys can, or purchase Lightning Lane. Now, unfortunately, this trip, I did not purchase Lightning Lane. With Lightning Lane, you can actually book your rides in advance at specific times. You can even purchase some rides specifically if you have to. Uh, so 100% check out Lightning Lane. Uh, it's a lot faster, a lot quicker, especially if you guys wanna ride as many rides as you can and you're limited on time. Now, number nine, plan your trip and don't be like us well in advance. Now, we booked our trip just three weeks ago because it's Oliver's birthday, kind of last minute. 100% plan your trips two, three, four, five, six months in advance. Guys, this is Disney World. There's five different parks, so much to do, a couple water parks, I believe, tons that you can do, so definitely don't be like us. Plan it well in advance. The prices will probably be better too. Now the number 10 tip, Book a hotel, you can, in the park. So being in the park, there's a few different trams that'll connect you directly to like Hollywood Studios, or certain parks where you can just jump on the tram, where you can arrive there almost instantaneously, very, very quick, very easy. Now the thing about being in the park also, the prices for those hotels specifically, 
are most likely a little more expensive. Now, one hotel that we would 100% recommend, there's tons of other properties outside of the park, is the JW Marriott Bonnet Creek, which we checked into just three days ago. So, so similar to the other hotels, just a 10 minute cab ride. Jets outside of the parks can get you to the park really easily. JW Marriott was a super comfortable property and an incredible stay, which I'd highly recommend, especially if you guys have a family. They just opened up their family suite with bunk beds, which we absolutely love. We also have a connecting room. The property is absolutely beautiful, incredible stay. They have a couple pools outside, super relaxing. They have tons of different restaurants. The food here is awesome. Yeah, so accommodation is really important. Definitely, if you can, and want to splurge, stay in the park, stay at one of those resorts in the park, or stay at a property outside of the park. One, again, I would highly recommend, I'm gonna put a link below, is the JW Marriott Bonnet Creek. Now number 11, go check out Disney Springs. So from the main locations in this general area, it's probably like a five to 20 minute taxi ride. It's super convenient to all the parks, really, really close. Disney Springs has tons of different shopping. They have entertainment, they have rides for kids too. Ali loved the train ride, and uh, they have tons and tons of different shopping and restaurants for you guys to enjoy. Now specifically, two of the best restaurants in Disney Springs that we ended up visiting ourselves is an Italian spot called Terralina. I believe that's how you call it. Midi absolutely loves Italian food. The food was incredible, the ambiance, the atmosphere. So definitely check out Terralini out in Disney Springs if you guys like Italian food. And the second restaurant I would highly recommend, one of the most popular one in Disney Springs, is called Paddlefish. So if you guys love seafood like Rachel does, definitely check out Paddlefish. The food there is incredible. It's on this little boat, this ship right in Disney Springs. And again, the food, the ambiance, everything my family came to, we absolutely love the food at Paddlefish. Cherolina for Italian, Paddlefish for seafood, but overall, check out Disney Springs for an incredible experience and shopping experience. Number 12, some rides recommend some type of a reservation similar to Tron at Magic Kingdom. So make sure you check on specific rides. Make sure you do book those reservations well in advance uh, so you're not disappointed when you guys get to the park like we were yesterday. Now number 14, if you're a family like us and you have a baby, you can actually rent strollers in the park, you can rent wheelchairs, you can also rent each electronic vehicles if you're a little older, uh, all in the park. The stroller was, I believe, $15 for single use or single baby, and it was actually $31 for two babies, so if you have two children. Now this tip is a little more specific because it's from Rachel, she's a mother, so all your mothers watching, this might make sense. Um, this single stroller costed $15. It only had two pockets to hold water bottles and one decent large pocket to hold stuff, but not enough space to hold your backpack or tote bags. You may want to invest in stroller hooks so you could hang your bags off the handle, but be careful it's not too heavy because it will tip over. On top of that, please note the stroller doesn't recline, so bring some towels or neck support so your baby is supported. Yeah, honestly, it didn't look too comfortable, but bring some towels, bring something, some type of padding to keep it comfortable for the baby. On top of that, there's no rain cover to the stroller, so bring something to cover it up just in case it rains, just as another heads up. And for the final tip guys, tip number 15, bring an extra change of clothing and some type of a towel and or cooling towel. It does get really, really hot. Uh, you will sweat a lot, so you'll either want to change your clothing or and or keep some type of a cooling towel around you as you walk through a park, as you have a great and amazing day in the park. Again, there's five different parks out here in Orlando. There's tons and tons and tons of fun that you can have with your family, with your friends. Solo, which I even saw a ton of solo travelers do. And I hope these 15 tips will help you guys out plan your next Disney vacation with your family, have an incredible and smooth time. And specifically for the hotel, JW Marriott Bonnet Creek, definitely check them out. I'll put a link below to their website. Highly recommend staying outside of the park as I notice a lot of the parks inside are a lot more expensive. But overall, I hope this video helped you out. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Make sure you guys smash the like button if you guys enjoyed this video. Comment down below if you guys are experts, if there's some other tips I should have added to this video to have a better or an amazing and smooth Disney trip with the family. And make sure you guys hit that notification bell so you guys are notified for the next videos. Overall, thank you guys so much for watching this video. We had an amazing time in Disney World and I hope you guys do too. Take care, guys.